this is a slightly larger audience than we had last time. So those of you who were here for the well, I hope you enjoyed that. but a film that I think is very deserving of resurrection. And uh, just to, uh, if there are any bloggers in the house, uh, please do not blog what I'm about to say. Uh, but it is oddly frustrating that that is the only form in which we can show this film, because obviously it is a picture in need of restoration. Uh, and the fact that that was a commercial DVD version of the film is absurd, yeah. uh, and I would just hope that um, good things fall in the right way so that that film can actually uh, get the restoration it obviously deserves. That's just a terrific movie. I was remiss in not uh, mentioning the wonderful score by Dmitry Tiankin, uh, who really did a great job with that. Uh, this is very close to the time that he's going to win his Oscar for the score of High Noon. And it, I love Tiampin's scores because if, you, if you're going the whole route tonight, uh, when we get to Angel Face, there will be, that's a score by Dmitry Tiampin that's absolutely uh, haunting and wonderful. And he was a pianist and composed all of his scores on the piano. And it's always fun to watch his films because in general there will come a point in the score where like all the orchestration drops out and you're just left with his piano and that's like his his signature in a way uh, and it was just terrific so anyway um, th these films that you're seeing today and through the rest of the festival are kind of we tried to do it uh, like we did last year with our a and b programs of films and so that was that was your b film uh, made independently uh, very low budget um, it was not intended to be a B film, but for our purposes it is, because you are about to see the A film of the afternoon. It doesn't get more A in Hollywood than a film made by William Wyler. He, he is the top shelf in Hollywood. Uh, and this movie um, is sort of emblematic for me of something that happened in films, Hollywood films in the early 1950s, particularly films that we now call noir, which is dirty cop noir. And although in this, this, what makes this story kind of interesting is that it's not that the character played by Kirk Douglas is dirty or corrupt, it's that his flaw is he's incredibly self-righteous. And this was something that was in the air in the early 1950s when people in authority really exerted that authority in a way that was trampling the rights of other people. And so that was clearly something on William Wyler's mind because he had been uh, one of the primary participants in uh, Hollywood Fights Back, uh, you know, countering the effects of the House Un-American Activities Committee and the, uh, the communist witch hunt that was going on. So you'll see there's a, there's a little bit of that in this story, talking about people abusing their power. Uh, but the movie is based on a play uh, by Sidney Kingsley, and he and William Wyler had history together because Sidney Kingsley wrote uh, the stage play Dead End that Wyler turned into a film uh, in 1939. And it was, uh, William Wyler was actually an investor in the Broadway production of this uh, of detective story. And it was almost a, a fait accompli that he would make the movie version. Uh, and everybody around Kirk Douglas and Eleanor Parker are from the original Broadway cast, all the, the supporting players, uh, including a wonderful film debut by actress Lee Grant, who is in this film, who doesn't ever even get a name in the film, but she is the kleptomaniac. Uh, that is in the cast, and I had, it was a great thrill for me to introduce this movie a couple of years ago at the Turner Classic Movies Film Festival and have Lee Grant as our guest, uh, because she is just an extraordinary person, and I think she's 92 now, and it's interesting to note that this was her movie debut. Uh, she was nominated for an Oscar for this film, and then she was blacklisted. Uh, and never made another film until she made In the Heat of the Night, 
1965, I want to say, 65 or 66, maybe even later than that. So, uh, and she was blacklisted really for her uh, husband because he, he was a very fiery uh, instigator, a, a very left-wing agitator in New York. Uh, agitator, that, that's a weird way of putting it, but he, he was very political and, uh, and she suffered the consequences because of that. Uh, but, you know, she gets the last laugh because she's still with us and uh, she's fabulous and I, I have to tell this story because I love it so much. Uh, after I did the interview with her at the TCM Festival, uh, we were walking out of the theater together and uh, I got to say, Lee looks pretty great. For, you know, she's 92 and she's very feisty. And as we're walking out of the theater, she kind of bumps me against the wall and like puts her hand on my shoulder and goes, how come we haven't done this before? <laughs> <laughs> and then we walk out in the lobby and it just so happened that uh, Ben Mankiewicz was coming down the stairs and Ben and I had been discussing how much we admired Lee Grant and how wonderful she was as an interview. And Ben goes, Lee, how are you? Good to see you. And, and she's standing there and she, Ben and I are side by side, 92 years old. And she's wearing black leather pants, okay? And she, and she looks at us and she goes, you two, you guys are pretty hot. How do we make this happen? <laughs> Lee Grant, ladies and gentlemen. There's more to that story than I'm not going to tell. <laughs> anyway, um, William Wyler as a filmmaker, like I say, is, a, is the top shelf in Hollywood, uh, known as a perfectionist, hundreds and hundreds of takes. Uh, but in this movie, you're going to see he's clearly shooting a stage play. Uh, and instead of doing his usual thing in multiple takes, uh, he took the entire cast uh, to, to uh, Arizona, someplace in Arizona, where they staged the play with the, the mix of Hollywood actors and the folks who created these parts on Broadway. And, and they worked the whole thing out. They did like seven performances uh, at this small theater in Arizona and then said, okay, we're ready, let's go shoot this thing. And he very much shot it like a stage play. Uh, and, and it's absolutely fantastic. The only thing that's the thing that's interesting about this is there's a, there's a plot point in the film um, that you'll see they're dancing around the idea of abortion, uh, which plays a very significant role in the plot. And there's a lot of allusions and things, but the fact that this got done at all uh, is a testament to William Wyler's power in Hollywood as you know, the, the A-list director. Uh, that he was able to make this and not really make significant changes to the plot. So um, I, I know you're going to enjoy this. It is, uh, and, I, and I thank our friends at Paramount Pictures uh, for what you're going to see is a DCP. It will not have emulsion scratches running through the film, thank God. Uh, this is a, a digital scan from the original negative. Uh, so this film, Paramount no longer prints film. They only do things digitally. Uh, but I'm glad that they're doing these things from the original negative, so the picture quality is really exceptional. Uh, and I, I, I know you guys are, it's a long day today, uh, but I am really thrilled to present William Wyler's detective story. Thank you. <laughs>